Good boy, Tucker. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Hey, hey. Welcome. Work smarter where you want. Consistency is key. And remember, if it's not in Red Tail, it never happened. This is learning at its most fun. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our summer series program. We're really excited about this. Uh, you should be able to see and hear us. We have Catherine on the line as well. Hi, everyone. Hey, hey, all right. So we're really excited about this. Essentially, the summer series is we decided to put together something why we're all at home. Um, you know, so we wanted to, to really give you a lot of that good content, a longer webinar, apart from just our regular Thursday webinars that we do, that is just an hour. Um, and we're going to be going through a lot of good information today here in the CRM. Um, so first, I want to talk about us. Actually, I love talking about me. <laughs> All right. So first off, uh, we are your presenters for course one and course three, if you're signed up. So there are four courses. Catherine and I are going to be presenting course one and course three, which are starting uh, at 9 a.m. today and 9 a.m. tomorrow. Um, if you've registered for those, we'll be seeing you for that as well. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the agenda itself. So our approach is going to be today, we're going to be covering history. And tomorrow in course three, we're going to be covering information. And essentially what that looks like is Catherine and I are going to be focusing on activities, notes, and then your processes, like workflows and things all day today. And then tomorrow we're going to jump in and then focus more so on the contact information itself. So we split the database into essentially two different sections. Um, as we're presenting today, um, there's going to be a few different things that are available for you. First off, I do want to point out that we have two others trainers on as well. They are not going to be presenting during this course. They are actually going to be presenting during courses two and four, and that is Haley and Austin. They are actually going to be the ones who are answering anything that comes in into the Q&A. So if you do have a question about um, anything that we're presenting about on, you know, or about the presentation itself, or you need clarification, feel free and use the Q&A section inside the Zoom program, okay? And then Haley and Austin are gonna be going through and answering any questions that you might have, um, just so we can make sure that everybody is on, on track. So there's quite a few of us here today, um, and we're gonna be going through things pretty fast um, we'll, we'll try and keep it um, as clear as possible, and we, we will go slow and make sure we're talking uh, to make sure that's understood. But if we're going a little bit too fast, um, you can clarify something that's definitely an option for you. Choose the Q&A option. Also, we're going to be using a tool inside Zoom um, for polls. So there's a few times where we're going to be um, asking questions um, at, during our sections, and it's actually interactive to where it'll pop up on your screen and you can answer the question. Um, and so there's, at the end of section one and section two of today, we're gonna have four questions after each. And so I do wanna point out that for Zoom, if you have the downloaded version of Zoom, if you downloaded the program when you signed up, then um, you'll be able to interact just fine. And that pop-up, you actually have control over. So wherever it is on your screen, maybe it's on a different screen, it might pop up behind a different browser, because it's separate, you might just click on Zoom and you can find that. If you don't see the poll because you're using the browser version of Zoom, um, it, you might not be able to interact. We will definitely be showing you those questions so you can still see what's going on. Okay, so again, we're gonna um, re come back to that and revisit that once we actually start those polls. But keep in mind, even like our videos, you see myself and Catherine, um, we're here. If you don't wanna see us, you have the ability to hide our videos if you don't want. <laughs> Keep us up. We're, we're, we're trying to be in a little, we got some more festive backgrounds over here. You know, we're trying to get in the, the mood for summer. Um, I'm in Sacramento, actually. I'm, I'm at the office. I'm one of the only people here today uh, because we're all working from home as well. Uh, but we wanted to bring a little bit of that, that summer, you know, vibe going on. Uh, Catherine, tell us where you're at. I'm actually in Chandler, Arizona. And don't worry, everyone, this has to be a fake tree because we just don't have that much greenery here. In the summer and it's, it's too hot already. So I'm the only person in this office. I think actually David Arsales is still here. He disappeared somewhere, but it's me, myself, and I here. <laughs> yeah. And actually, uh, 
along with myself here in the Sacramento, the main headquarters, Haley and Austin are also in this building, but we're all on like completely opposite ends, avoiding each other as much as possible, just trying to stay safe. But with all that, we're excited to bring the summer series to you today. So let's jump in and let's talk about the agenda for today. Uh, we're gonna be covering for the first section from 9 a.m. to 1020 is history part one. And so that's where we're gonna be covering your database list in regards to your notes and activities, and then talking about reminders and then reporting on all of that information. Then we're gonna take a 10 minute break. Um, we'll have a timer set up for you guys so you can get back, get your cup of coffee, get a snack, however you want. And then at 10.30 to 12, we're gonna be covering history part two, which is essentially just workflows. Uh, we're gonna talk about workflows along with the automation feature as well and show you how those two programs or those features work together in the system. So you can make sure and set up your processes as best as possible to be successful inside of Redtail. Really excited. Are you ready to start, Catherine? Let's do it. Let's, let's do it, that's exactly. So history part one, we're starting in section one. We're gonna talk about data, good data equals clean data. And there's really three types of data that you can have at your disposal. And the three types are your Rolodex data, your historical data, and your information data. Now, like we said, we've split our courses uh, into two different sections. So today in course one, we're gonna be focusing on your historical data. And then tomorrow, we're gonna be focusing on the informational data, but that third type, the Rolodex data, is essentially what it is, it's a Rolodex. You know, I, my dad used to have one on his desk, I think, you know, most of us, you know, uh, older millennials had parents who had Rolodexes. It's just how you got, up. exactly, you could spin it around. Um, but you can find somebody's name and find their contact information, how to get a hold of them. I mean, you can even like, you know, staple a business card to it, easy to find. But essentially, that's just the basic form of a CRM is a Rolodex. But taking these two other types of information and the data gives you the ability to, to really put power into it. Okay, so again, the historical data is what we're going to be focusing on with the activities and the notes and then talking about those categories and then setting up types for those. And when you talk about segmenting, we're first going to talk about the best practices for high level versus detailed level. So with your activities, when you're setting up something to add to your calendar, something on your task list, something to do, you have an activity type and then you have a category. So the activity type is meant to be high level tells you what kind of appointment, is it a phone call, is it a task, what kind of activity is this gonna be? And then the category is gonna be the more detailed is what it's going to be about. So if it's appointment, what kind of appointment? If it's a phone call, what kind of phone call? You can use those two fields to be very specific for how you want to segment your data with your notes and your activities. So it's very important to go in and set those up. Now, Redtail already has some system types set up for both of these items, but you have the ability to actually go in and then create custom types, both for the activity types and the categories themselves, which is great because every office runs slightly differently and we wanna make sure that you have the verbiage that you're already using for your activities and things like that inside the system so you don't necessarily have to change your verbiage. You can add it into the system and then use that for your reporting later on. Okay, so again, keep in mind for activities, there's a high level of activity type and then the more detailed level of the activity category. Now, if you want to customize this, you can actually go in to your database lists and you have the ability to control that information. Now, we, we are gonna take you in, we're gonna go into the back part of the database, into the database lists, and we're actually gonna show you how to set these up, how you can manage them, how you can edit them however you want. Um, and then on top of that, I'm gonna show you a little trick. We're gonna talk a little bit about note and activity templates. I absolutely love these. Um, this is where you can actually set up templates that get used. So it's like, you don't have to fill out every specific thing every single time if it, you're typing in the same type of information. Okay, so we're gonna go jump into the database now and we're gonna build out our activity types and categories and then create some templates based on that information. Love that. So switching over to the database now, everyone should see the CRM. What I'm gonna do is in the top right hand corner, I'm gonna choose my name 
I'm logged in as Tucker McLaughlin today, and then I'm gonna choose manage your account. Once you're on manage your account, you can scroll all the way down to this section that says admins only. Now, if you have the ability to see this section and it says admins only, congratulations, you have admin access, but not every single user has access to the admins only section. And that all has to do with the managed database users and teams right down here. And what that means is when your username was created, whoever created it has the ability to choose whether or not you have admin access. So you don't have to allow everybody to access this if you don't want certain things changed. You can only allow certain people if you want. So again, if you don't have access to the admins only, you want to talk to someone who's in your database as an admin or the database owner so they can give you those rights themselves. And if you're now, not but what we're gonna... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry go ahead. If you're not an admin, it's not a bad thing. Um, I know sometimes we see it, we're like, oh my gosh, why don't I have it? It's not a bad thing, like we're saying here. Um, but you just don't want to have too many people going in there and making changes. That's when you might see things getting deleted um, without realizing that there's some ramifications that could happen. So if you are seeing it and you think that you really should be, definitely like Curtis is saying here, work with whoever does have an admin access or your database owner, and they can update that for you um, if you really feel like you should be an admin. But again, not everyone should be. Correct. Correct. So let's take that. And what we're going to do is come right over here to manage database lists under the admins only section. And once you're there on the right hand side, you're going to see where it says manage lists. And it's actually a list of all of the customizable lists. So we like to joke, it's like an inception. There's lists inside of lists inside of lists. This list is even broken down into smaller lists themselves. Um, you'll actually notice we've done a few updates recently where we've recently added account tax qualified types and account asset types to this list. So you will sometimes see things added to this, which is great. I love that we're adding more customization, but we're gonna scroll down past the contact section. Today, we're focusing on the notes and activities. So activities and notes right here, and you'll see there's two items. There's activity types, because this only applies to activities, and then just categories. The reason categories isn't specific is this categories is available on notes, on activities. It's actually available for uh, categorizing your documents in the CRM, as well as your workflows. Um, so again, there's more options that this categories has, but we're gonna start high level with activity types. All right, so once you click activity types, you'll see on the, lit, on the left hand side here, you have the full list of what's available. If you wanna add to this list, all you have to do is just choose add right up here. And then you can type out whatever new item you want to add to this list. You'll notice that we already have a few. So we have, we have client review as an activity type. We also have client meeting. The reason we have them as two different items is maybe in our database, we want to make sure that they are separated as two different items. There's a difference between a regular client meeting and then our yearly client review. And that's how we want to segment that. You also have the ability, maybe it's too specific here. You can use client review and client meeting in the category section too, and maybe just mark it as appointment. So again, we can give suggestions, but like, again, you have complete control over how you set these lists up. Like for this specific example today, we're gonna to be using client review quite a bit, showing that activity type. But you'll notice I also have things like out of office. Um, we've seen people who create open appointment slots and they make that as a type. Um, seminars, there's tasks themselves. You can set up a vacation day even. Like there's a type, you wanna add a vacation day to your calendar, you can use the high level activity type to do that. So you can easily see, hey, this isn't an appointment, it is a vacation day. And that's the point is segmenting your data so you can control exactly what you have. We've actually added in a, a recent update um, for these lists. So if I come over to try and delete one of them, so if I come over and choose to delete, what happens now is it doesn't want to leave this activity type on all of the ones that might exist. So now what you can do is say, I'm gonna delete this, but I want everything that's tied to this specific type to move over to this new, uh, to this new type. This is a recent update. So again, if you delete an activity type or anything from the database lists, you can move everything that's already tagged with that specific type or whatever list you're, you're managing over to another one before you remove it. And so that's one great way to make sure that you don't have bad data. And I love that update as well. 
So coming back over to the right hand side, if I click on activities and notes, and now I'm gonna click categories. Again, same thing, I can create this list. This one is normally quite a bit longer than the activity types, and that's fine because there's normally more options. You're building off of the original activity type list. And again, this one also exists for your notes. So when you create notes, and Catherine's gonna talk about creating those a little bit later, but when you're creating them, you wanna make sure that you have the appropriate category set up and you can come in here. So for instance, there's different things like we have again, client meeting notes, client review notes. Those are set up to be as for a note category. So if I just add in the note, instead of going through the activity, I can still mark it that it was a client review note. I've talked to a few offices who had trouble with reporting on their notes and setting up the categories is very important because if you make every single note, let's say all of your client review notes, all of your phone call notes, all of your anything that you make a note for, and you only mark things as general information with the, with the category of general information, that's as far down as you can dig at that point. You want to have the ability to categorize it so you can actually report. There's power in reporting, and it's important to use the categories to do so. For instance, you can even create, we have one here called complaint. If you need to mark your complaints for compliance purposes, you can have a note category specifically for that and easily pull up any note that was made with that specific category. I love that. And you'll notice this list can be a little bit long, even things for a phone call incoming, phone call outgoing. You can notate every interaction that you have. And that's really important at that point. One I always so, like to point out as well really fast, Curtis, is the canceled no-show. We see it all the time where, hey, I've got this client who's notoriously bad at showing up for their appointments. We've called, we've reminded them, but we've canceled and re like had to reschedule this meeting seven different times. And I see it all the time where they'll just delete it. And that's not really what we want because we want to have that historical data showing all of those attempts that you've made versus six months down the line, they'll come back at you going, hey, why did we never meet? You can look back at your reporting with this specific category and go, well, remember the six different attempts we've tried over the last couple of months? You have that data. So feel free to also use these categories for situations like this canceled no-show. You can leave it like we have it. You could break it down further if you wish, um, but that is an easy way to track information so you don't lose it. This is true. And actually, if you're not sure what to put or if you want to add certain things to these lists and you're not sure what options are available, because honestly, the, the brainstorming it can get a little bit hard. You can't possibly think of every situation at one moment in time. We actually have, so in the link that um, Rick posted in the chat section, um, it's, a, it's this PDF booklet and there is a page in there called sample database lists and you can see, okay, here's options for every single one of our customizable lists. So that's, that's something I would definitely go in and check out as well after our trainings today. All right. So on top of setting up your database lists, we also want to prep for our templates of what we might select for our notes and activities templates. I'm not going to dive too deeply into them because Catherine's going to be explaining a lot of the things that are in these. But what a template is, is a preset, you know, essentially like you're filling out a form, you know, so I want to fill out the note when I make it real fast because I know I need to fill out um, this, the subject this way, I need to fill out the type and the category this way for an activity. You can have those automatically set by using templates. So again, there's notes and activities templates and to set up either of those, you're going to go to your name in the top right, manage your account, and then about halfway down, you'll see the manage templates section. And you can click on either activity templates or note templates. Now, again, if I open up the activity templates right here, these are just creating outlines or essentially like a guideline for what I need filled out based on different situations. So I have one right here called follow up phone call. I can open that up and I can see that it's going to automatically set the type and the category in a certain way. It's going to automatically set the importance. You can choose certain things to be automatically set based on these templates. Same thing for like a staff meeting. I have one automatically for a staff meeting and it automatically assigns the 18 people as users to that activity. So you have the ability to, again, have those fields in both notes and activities automatically filled out for you based on the situation you're in. 
Okay. And same thing goes if I go back to my name and then choose manager account, and then I come over to my note templates and come in here. Um, and let's say that we want to do, um, let's, let's make a note template, shall we, real fast. I'm just going to hit new note right up in here, and then you can name the note template itself. So let's call this, you know, incoming phone call. Type in however you want, you name the template. And then if I have certain questions that I need to ask anytime there's a phone call, you know, I can write those in here. So it's essentially you're creating a guideline, you know, so who did you speak with? And while Curtis is filling that out, another really key item to take away when it comes to both activity and note templates is that this is going to help with consistency. So if you have someone in the office who's notoriously bad at picking the right category, this kind of takes that out of the equation so that way it can match up with those notes. Um, or coming back to that activity template, you can pick that correct type and activity category so you don't have to worry about it later on going, dang it, he forgot to pick it again. What is going on? <laughs> exactly. Or even with if you want to always be notified um, by certain notes or activities, you can create the templates and just say, we need to use the template so we have consistency. And that's what this is about is setting up consistency. So at this point, and this is just very simple, I put it's an incoming phone call for a note. I put, who did you speak with? Follow-up items. Just two simple things. You can put so much more. You have the ability. But all this is doing is pre-filling out certain things in your note. Okay. So, and again, if you need to make changes to your note template, it's not going to update anything that already happened because it's just copying the information and putting it in that note at that time. And I'm just going to save this. And then it's available to use. So how do we actually use this information after it's set up? Let's talk about that. So Catherine, take it away. Perfect. And let's actually even go back even a step further and actually answer, what is a note? <laughs> because I know we get that question all the time. When do I use notes? When do I use activities? When do I use workflows? And the second you start to think of past tense, you've already made that recommendation. You've already had that conversation. You've made that suggestion that's immediately that thought, think of notes. So again, think of notes as past tense. So who did we talk to? Did we actually talk to our client or did we have to leave a message with um, maybe his spouse or um, the secretary or whoever that it is that we talked to? When did we talk to them? I know sometimes it's incredibly hard to actually get a hold of someone and type in that note immediately. So again, making note of when we actually did it as close to when we actually did it. And then what did we actually talk about? The actual meat and potatoes of the note itself. Nothing's worse than if we just type in spoke to client. <laughs> it doesn't really answer that question of, well, what did you talk about? Did you talk about specific accounts? Uh, did you talk about maybe some family changes that are occurring that could really have an impact on their financial situation? So really answering these who, when, what questions will help build that foundation with notes. Now, when it comes to notes themselves, there are quite a few features. So go ahead and click on the next slide. I'm going to just touch a couple here, and then I'd rather point them out in the actual CRM itself. So when it comes to note features, right off the bat, my favorite one is actually the ability to link another contact itself. I seriously feel like I get this question almost every training I have is, well, this affects multiple people. In that instance, that's when you know, hey, I should immediately link this other contact, whether that's the spouse, whether it's three different beneficiaries or whatever that situation might be, we can link those accounts. Another feature that's really come into play, at least I feel like recently has been a really big deal, is permissions. You have the ability to just permission that note. Um, that could be incredibly helpful if maybe someone had a complaint against one of your coworkers in the office not a huge fan of drama so i don't necessarily want everyone to read that note i might permission that off to just me so let's actually hop into the crm let's add a note and let's cover all of these specific note features though so let's come on back we're going to get to the today page now there's multiple ways we can actually add a note from this page itself we can actually click on that quick add button at the top and we can actually add in a note right here However, I want to go to a contact record just because I want to show something that's really helpful when it comes to that contact record. So we actually need to pull up Kevin Arnold, Chris, uh, because he kind of called this morning. <laughs> so we need to add in a note this morning here. So we can pull him up and then let's actually just point out some note features as well. 
So if I do that same quick add button from this page, come down to notes as well, you're going to see something here that it immediately links that contact. Now that might not seem like a huge deal, but when you have someone who has very similar names, or if you've got a senior, junior, third, fourth, who all have the same name, it's very easy to accidentally apply it to the wrong person. So right out of the get-go, that just immediately takes that one potential human error out of the equation. The next thing you see right after that is that template that Curtis just mentioned. So if you have a situation like an incoming phone call, or you just had the client review and you wanna fill out those notes, you can pick that template and it's gonna pre-fill in your data right there. Scrolling down just a text, we won't add the note just yet, I want to see that you have the ability of that category, which again, already pre-filled with that note template. If it needed to be something else for just this particular one, you could change that, of course. Um, but for ours, we're just going to leave it. And, and then we. And that's a good point. It's the note templates are just a starting off point. Yeah. It's not saying it has to be this every single time. It's defaulting to specific items just to make consistency much more Consistent, uh, consistency right. more consistent. Yeah. I am a wordsmith over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the end all be all if we need it. Um, but then right below that is that linked context that we have. So Kevin's married and maybe this particular note involves Gwendolyn here. So I can start typing out her name here. It's gonna immediately pop up, I'll click her and now she's linked to this note. If this was also applicable to a specific account, I can link an account right below that as well. Um, you don't have to, obviously, if it doesn't apply, don't pick it, but then you can have that. And then coming back to that notifying user or team, maybe on that template, I didn't have that built in, but this particular one, I need it to notify someone. I can, again, do that for just this particular scenario. So if we wanted to message someone, we can. And then coming back to that permission type right at the bottom, if it is something where you don't want everyone in the office to see, this is where this is coming in. So you can have it so that way, maybe you're the only one that needs to see it. That's where you'll pick that user. Maybe just you and your particular team needs to see it. That's where you'll pick that team. Now, the one hidden gem of this, which is not so hidden, <laughs> is that ability to create that follow-up activity. So if you have something where it's like, maybe you're trying to get a hold of someone and you left a message, and now you wanna create a follow-up to call them back, you can just click that box, it's gonna link this note, and again, it comes back to that activity template. So if you have something like follow-up phone call, you can immediately pick that particular information. So before we actually save this note, let's hop back to the PowerPoint really, really quick just to make sure we covered everything there. So again, create that ability to add in all of those details. The more specific you are with linking those contacts, linking those accounts, notifying, it's gonna ultimately save you some time in the long run because it has all of that detail really included in there for that organizational purpose. And then if you have a situation where you need to create that follow-up, click that follow-up right from there. So that way you can immediately know that, hey, this is what happens, here's what I need to do as a result. So create that follow-up and then really utilize that activity template. Save yourself some extra clicks, save some time. Save some sanity, maybe. <laughs> you feel like you're clicking the same things over and over lately. This might just help cut back on that. So again, add in your details and create that follow-up if necessary. All right, go ahead. All right, let's hop on back before we actually do this activity then. So we've got in our phone call category, we've got in our link contact, let's actually add in what we need for this note. So Kevin wanted a quick follow-up. He had some questions on actually all of his accounts, not just one specifically, all of them. So we're gonna keep that kind of vague when we have our linked note or our linked accounts. And we need to actually schedule this actual follow-up. So again, just saying, hey, we missed it. We need to give him a call back, call Kevin or Winnie. So this is a perfect example. Maybe it's not just one person you could talk to. Maybe it's both or just another person. Make that note in here so that way you can have that. We now, have even though we, we are putting follow-up items in the note, this part of it is more so about notating that this is what needs to happen. We still need to meet, make that action item, which is why we're choosing this check mark. Right. So again, even if you put directions to do something in a note, you still have to make it actionable in some way. Right. Because remember, your note itself is documenting what has already occurred. 
So we've already missed that conversation with Kevin. We need to create that follow-up. So that activity is gonna come in with that future. So we have that, we're picking our template. We're gonna save our note in here now. So again, we've got everything we at least need for the moment. And then once we're here, it's gonna immediately bring us to our activity details page, which we're gonna hold off to in just a second because we like to build suspense here. <laughs> Let's actually talk <laughs> about what an activity is because we've gone over our past now let's actually talk about our future and that comes in with activities so activities are literally everything that still needs to happen whether that's five seconds from now 20 minutes from now a full-on year from now whatever that situation is that is an activity so questions we have for here are going to be geared around that future date what are we going to do when are we going to do it and then who is it actually for is it for multiple people is it just for one is it an actual phone call? Is it a meeting? It's answering these questions of what is it that I actually have to get on my agenda to finish? So activities, think of future, notes are all about the past. But when we actually build out our activities, we wanna add in all of those juicy informations that we have similar to our notes. So this is coming in and utilizing those types and categories to really organize your data. It's putting in the correct start times and end times and it's also making sure the correct attendees are actually involved. Is it something that's just affecting me? Is it something Curtis and I both have to get done? Is it for neither of us? <laughs> it's answering those questions of who's supposed to get it done. And then we also have some importance and priority. So let's hop back into the system here and let's actually build out that particular information we have. So when we come back here, we already have our subject, our type, and our category filled out because we picked that particular template. Now, if we wanted, again, to maybe customize the subject, follow up and put the actual client name, you know, some people really like to do that just so it's really kind of hay in your face. Um, and then again, our typing category is filled out. We don't need to change that's already marked as is. If this is a particular situation where we have to follow up at a specific time, this is where we're gonna wanna uncheck that all day box. But if it's something where it's like, hey, you know what, as long as you call me on that specific day, no big deal. So it's really up to you as to what that situation might be. Now, right below that, you have location. Now, not so much right now, but if you had a meeting where it's like at a restaurant where there's the whole lunch situation involved, you can put that same restaurant. So um, that way you don't go to the wrong one. <laughs> that might happen. Um, so right now you could utilize, if you're doing a lot of webinars or Zoom-based meetings, this might be a really good spot to put that particular information so you're not losing that particular link. Um, but again, use this location to what you might need. If you want to feel we, really um, interesting. Yeah, we've actually been, <laughs> we've been using this internally. So just as Catherine's saying is, we're doing, as trainers, we do webinars, we, we do through Zoom meetings all the time. We're putting the meeting IDs of those in the location. Again, just because even though we're not meeting somewhere, we're meeting virtually somewhere. And so in the virtual world, there's still a location and that's a great use for that field itself. So you can post that meeting ID, have it easier to find. You don't have to go scrolling through all your emails to see, okay, I know that was in here somewhere, put it in the system. That's the point of the CRM. You put the information there so it's all in one place so you don't have to go find it anywhere else. Perfect. And then even more details come in with that importance and priority. Now, um, if you change that importance to high and you change every single activity you have to high, that null and voids that whole situation. So use this sparingly. Um, what I've seen really working, at least lately, um, if you are assigning other people tasks and there's just one in particular that has to happen before anything else, I've seen people really use that importance of priority to really signify that, hey, just because we're not in the office doesn't mean I'm not telling you this is really the most important piece of material you've got to get done. So definitely use that, but use it sparingly. <laughs> use it wisely. Uh, description, if you have anything, but the one thing I will say when it comes to description, if you have like um, notations you wanna mark in here, like, hey, on five, six, I spoke to this, which had a, like an inner workings of this activity, I don't recommend putting that actual completed item in this description. That's really where those linked notes come in. So, if you are part of that office where you're like, that's totally us, we see it in our description, all of our completed tasks with the, the dates and our initials next to it, really feel free to utilize that link notes to actually capture that. This is just kind of giving those, hey, 
here's just a little bit more details as to what's going on with this activity. Um, but if you look just to the right, that's where you're seeing that linked note. And because we actually started from a note, this is that follow-up, this is actually automatically linked in here. So I don't have to leave the page to actually remember what it was that I actually put in here. So that's a really beautiful feature to help again. And, and then, also the linked notes is great for ongoing notation. So even though it only made it when you started it, if let's say for instance that you, the day comes and you call Kevin to update him, he doesn't answer, go in here and hit add a linked note and say, you know, left message. Mm -hmm. uh, calling back, if I can spell today correctly, it's not gonna happen, but also I, fun fact, make fun of me as I spell things wrong. It's gonna happen all day today. And I always feel like there's more pressure when you know people are watching. It's like, <laughs> I, they're judging, I could feel it. <laughs> um, so definitely, Curtis is making a valid point here. Feel free to add these notes in, and similar to just our regular notes that appear on the contact, it's gonna date time and user stamp it as well. So it's really keeping track of, hey, what happened? Um, so really helpful there. If there was a linked account to that note, it actually would also populate here. Maybe when we actually gave a phone call, that's when we realized, whoops, we do need to attach it. You still can. You can link a document as well. But coming actually more towards the center of the screen here, you had that ability to notify again. So similar to how we used our notes, if we need to let someone know about this, um, maybe this person was like pulling tooth and nail <laughs> to, to get them in here. This might be one of those times to use that notification. You also have the ability to set this as a private activity. The one thing to keep in mind here is that if you are the database owner, there's no such thing as privacy. You're going to see everything. Um, but this might be helpful if you have like, hey, a doctor's appointment and you don't really want everyone to know about that. You could put that in as a privacy. And then um, right oh, on that itself, if you are doing this and you choose like just me as the privacy options, but let's say up here in the top right, I also come in here and add Catherine as an attendee. I just assigned this activity to Catherine, but made it so she can't see the activity. Okay, so keep in mind, most of the time I suggest that the only attendees is one of the best options. So you, if, if someone's out on the activity, they're gonna be able to see it. But again, if you have it saying just me and assigned to other people, they can't do anything with that activity because they won't see it. Perfect, actually perfect. Yeah, let's try not to set ourselves or our team members up for failure, which can also come in with recurrence here. So if this were a repeating activity, you can actually set this up down here. Now, we did recently make an update to this, and to me, it's actually easier. It's really just saying, hey, is it a daily occurrence? Is this a weekly? Is this a monthly? Is this annually? And if you're looking at these and you're going, where in the world did they get this Thursday? Where in the world did they get May 21st? It's based around the activity itself. So if we were to come back up and we click on May 21st here, that is that Thursday. It's the third Thursday of this month and it's the 21st. So that's where that pattern comes in. I swear we didn't just come up here and go, I'm gonna pick a Thursday just cause it's fun. It's there because of what we have as our activity. Now, if you're looking at this going, there's nothing for every three months or every six months, that's where custom can come in. So if this was something where, hey, I need to follow up with him every six months or every three months, I can come in here, pick that scenario, and then have that repeating. And again, that's based off of what our particular activity is. The one thing I will suggest though, whatever it comes with the repeating activity, put a repeat end state. So right now it says never, but if we actually click on this on and we start filling it in, just, just try to go out as far as you can, Curtis. Just have at it. Have fun. All right, we can go to Perfect. Yeah, I think that's the good. year 100 or 18,000, the year 18,000. So if Curtis and I are still, if this video is still out there in the year 18,000 and future selves are watching this, that is going to have that particular date. So we recommend setting an end date. So that way, if this is maybe, hey, we're only following up with him for the next three months for the next two years, maybe put an end date of two, three, four years from now. It's a lot easier if you need to um, complete the whole series, if you're completing it for four years versus 35 years. It's just, hey, put it in there just to make it a little easy on us. So in this, this case, let's is not, not make it repeat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not gonna repeat. Kevin doesn't wanna hear from us that much. 
So let's just go ahead, let's make sure we've got everything we need here. We've got our subject, we've got our dates. We're leaving it as an all day. We have two attendees, we've got our two linked contacts. We've got a brief description, we've got a brief uh, linked notes attached in there. I think we're good here. Now, one more thing here as well, actually, I'm so sorry, <laughs> go ahead and hop back in. It's really important that once this activity is actually finished or all done with it, to complete your activity. So I know sometimes we get some confusion when we're looking at the actions going, where is this actually, what are these different options? Save and clone is if you have to do another activity that's almost identical to this, you're just changing the date. Save and complete is going to be your best friend when it comes to activities. You want to make sure you complete your activities because once you have completed an activity, it becomes a historical note on your contact record. So that's really where that category kind of comes full circle because that activity ends up becoming a note because it's completed, it's past tense. So just wanted to point that out really quickly because that is something that I always, always, always want to drill into everyone, complete your activities. You could do the same thing from the little action icon just to the left of Thursday. You don't have to click into the actual activity, but just complete it as long, <laughs> any way you feel comfortable, just make sure you do that. So we're not gonna do that yet though, because we still have it on our agenda. We built out our, our activity. Now, where else can we see these activities? Because maybe I don't wanna know just Kevin's. Maybe I wanna know everything I have going on in my world. That's really where that today page comes into. This is gonna give you kind of that screenshot of what you have to get finished today. It might be a meeting here, it might be a phone call there, maybe you have a task thrown in there somewhere. This is where you're gonna see that. So on the today page, you have that things to do today. And then actually, before we hop in, Chris, go ahead and click to the next slide. You also have the ability to see everything on your calendar as well. So your activities will end up on the contact record, on the today page, and on the calendar. But let's actually go see them actually in action. So coming back to our today page, we'll just click on the left, click on today. Right in the middle there, we have those things to do today. So again, these are those activities we have scheduled to actually complete today. We have to call Tim for a trade, we have initial contact, and then once we've completed them, like her showing there, we'll actually mark complete and then they'll disappear from our actual today page. Perfect. You also can look at past due and upcoming. I always recommend past due at least once a week and that's really giving a cushion. I do it almost every day just to be safe. But this is really just to make sure that you didn't accidentally leave something open. So don't be like us where we have things we, from April We 7th. left a lot of things open. <laughs> <laughs> don't, yeah, don't do as we say, not as we do <laughs> scenarios. So what this is saying though, is that on April 7th, I was supposed to have a client review with Joe Madden, and I'm not sure if that actually happened because it's still open. So if we know for a fact it has happened, that's where we come in and complete them. If they no-showed or canceled, that's when we're gonna use that category for us and have that no-show canceled and reschedule that actual activity. Maybe- And actually, Catherine, that's a great point on the completing that I did wanna point out. And, and Catherine knows um, my calendar, and I'm, I'm gonna point this out, everything <laughs> I do is on the red tail calendar and I don't necessarily complete everything as soon as it happens. This is one of those, again, do as I say, not as I do. And let me tell you what's wrong with how I'm doing it. So because I don't complete until like the Friday, so my Monday appointments, things like that stay open until Friday. What that tells the system is that yes, this activity was scheduled at this day and time, but the system doesn't say I actually did it until Friday. So when I complete it, it still has that date and time of when it was scheduled for, but then a note gets made saying it was completed on Friday at 3.59. You know, so right, right before Curtis walked out the door, everything was completed. That, that's wrong. You know, now it's good that I still completed them, but it's telling the system something that actually happened. I know I did that meeting on Monday at two o'clock, but I didn't mark it as complete until Friday. So you want to stay consistent with, with the best data you can and completing things in a timely manner is good data. Uh, you've probably heard us say it multiple times if you've joined our other Thursday webinars, but if it's not in Redtail, it didn't happen.
That's what notes are about. That's what activities are about. That's what completing your activities is about. If you didn't complete your activity, then you didn't complete your activity. All right. So it's really important for the reporting that you complete them as soon or as close to possible so you know exactly what's going on in your database. Exactly. Uh, kind of also teeing off of that though too, maybe you had a task that you legit did not complete that day. And I have, I get it. I always call it the case of Mondays. I have great intentions on Mondays. And then Mondays are always just a slap in the face going, nope, you've got 17 additional things that are gonna come out of nowhere that need to be finished first. That's where you can always reschedule or if maybe you didn't get a hold of it today, but you could do it tomorrow type of thing. That's where that rollover equation can come in. So if it is something where you need to go out really far, but instead it was the, hey, I came in the next day. It's the first thing I'm going to get done today because I didn't get it done yesterday. That's where rollover really can come in. So we're rolling over an activity from May 18th that we can actually get a hold of for today, but maybe I need a rollover from April 7th. I could do that. So that's really where that's coming in. So um, unlike notes, activities can be edited. That's something, again, you always want to focus in on. Uh, so this is that today page, but maybe you're more like me where I like to kind of get a view of everything I've got going on the week. That's where calendars can come in. So if we click on the calendar on the right, or I'm sorry, left-hand side, I know directions today. Um, <laughs> you can come in here and then we actually have it default to month. Over on the right hand side, you can see that there's day, week, and month. Um, so just depending on what view you really wanna do, you have that ability to change that. You also have the ability to look at everyone's calendar. So if again, if you're one of those that has to book activities for um, maybe three other advisors, if that's something you have to do, you can pick just those specifics so that way you're not double booking them and running into that problem. If you're also looking at ours and going, where in the world did they come up with this color scheme? That's under your actions. That's gonna be based off of your activity types though. So if you come to actions, you click on change colors. If you have it where it's like, hey, I want my client reviews to be a specific color and I have that as a type, I could then come in here and change that particular setting. So again, just wanna focus in though, it's based off of the activity type, not category. I know sometimes that causes confusion. So I wanna make sure I pointed that out. But as you can see, we've got a whole Plethora of colors there, <laughs> so make sure you use it for you. Um, you also can have it where if you have maybe all day tasks like birthdays and anniversaries that you don't necessarily wanna see all the time, that can be set either under preferences or under your actions, you can temporarily hide them. So under actions, if I wanna hide um, workflows, client birthdays, holidays, if I wanna hide all of those things, it's gonna be just for this temporary moment. Meaning if my preferences have that permanently showing, and if I leave this page and come back, it's gonna to revert to how I have my preferences set up. So that's pretty much the calendar in a nutshell. We didn't get too, too creative here. We didn't wanna completely reinvent this. We didn't wanna cause anyone to just be frustrated out of the gate. Um, but this is your look at to what you have going on as far as activities in your actual CRM itself. There you go. Oh, yeah. I can also click on today. I was on a different month altogether, but <laughs> clicking on today allows today me to do bring us that. Back. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Let's hop back. Oh, now let's, yeah. we're going to pivot a little bit. We're still talking about managing your schedule, things like that, but I want to focus a little more on reminders themselves. So there's different things in the system that create reminders. Um, and so things like client reviews or birthdays, account renewals, marital anniversaries. Um, what a reminder is, is something in the database that has a date, maybe it's a repeating frequency that actually tells you, hey, like your client review is coming up, you need to schedule the client review or hey, their birthday is coming up. Now, these reminders are not set, they're not created on the calendar. You don't create them. All you have to do is just put them in as a date in somewhere. So like the date of birth on a contact record, there's the client review section that we're going to cover more so tomorrow um, in our information side about how to set that up. But the reminder is not an actual action item like an activity is. And so I do want to talk about what is the actual difference between activities and reminders. So again, activities are created on the calendar. It's sort of like a one-off situation. I need to do this task. 
Um, they can be repeating, like Catherine showed you, you can set up a repeating event. They can be assigned to multiple people. So you can say, this activity is going to be assigned to myself and Catherine. And we can do that task as soon as one of us does it and completes it, it shows, it shows completed on the other person's calendar as well. The biggest thing that activities do is records your history. And again, that's what this is about is recording your history. I know I, I made this phone call. I know I did this task because it's in as an action item. Reminders is there's, there's very minimal historical data, but they're created in different parts of the database. For instance, I mentioned birthdays. There should be no reason that I need to say, how many birthdays have I had in the past five years? It's, it's a no-brainer. I had five birthdays in the past five years. I don't necessarily need to run a report and see when did my birthday happen over the past five years. It's the same day every single year. Now, what the reminder is for is to say, I need to get something on the calendar. So if it's like a client review reminder and it's showing, I have a reminder for next week, that's saying I need to call and schedule an action item. I need to schedule a meeting for the client review. Um, one of our favorite things to talk about is Catherine and I uh, actually have birthdays one day apart. She is October 22nd. I'm October 23rd. Um, this last year, her birthday fell on a Tuesday. My birthday fell on a Wednesday. And what's great about that is it's sort of an example where I want to throw a birthday party. Even though my birthday, the reminder, is on the 23rd, I'm going to actually schedule it for a weekend. I want to have the party on a weekend. Now, in your case, you're probably not going to be scheduling anything for, for a weekend. So if a reminder shows on the weekend, it means you want to schedule it during the week. So even though that reminder might not might be on a Saturday or Sunday, it doesn't mean they have to come in that day. Sort of like, I do not have to have my birthday party on the actual day itself. I want to have it on a Friday or Saturday. That's the actual action item that's going to happen. So again, reminders are meant to be proactive. I'm looking ahead. So for the month of June, how many client review reminders do I have? So I actually now have a list so I can reach out and schedule those, get them on my calendar. So again, those dates are only there to say, you need are reminded to get this done. I still need to do the work to make sure it happens. So, Let's actually jump in and let's talk about reporting a little more on that. Um, with reporting, there is reporting in regards to reminders as well, but you're asking questions very similar to what Catherine was talking about with notes and activities, but it's about who do we talk to, when do we talk to them, what do we talk about? And same thing going goes for the reminders can be about what are the reminders coming up for the next 30 days, the next 15 days, where do I find that information? That's how your reporting works, is you're, you're proactively looking for the information in your CRM. And so in this case, let's first talk about on the Today page, the easiest place to find your reminders is up here at the top on the Today where it says, I have 44 reminders, I can click on it, and it's going to default to whatever my preference is. Now you do have preferences, which you can access your name in the top right, choose preferences, and you can control which reminders you want to show here as the default, this is showing my client reviews. I can see that Kevin Arnold is supposed to have a client review about the 22nd. Doesn't mean that it's scheduled for the 22nd. It means I need to get him scheduled as close to that date as possible because that's, that's when his review should take place, about this day, about that, that uh, of the month. Now in this case, I can always come over to filter and I can choose. Maybe I wanna see my client birthday. So I can say, show birthdays. And it's going to show here's the birthdays that are upcoming. This is just a list view for those reminders. How Catherine also mentioned is on the calendar, you can see them as all day events. So again, if I'm seeing right over here, if I choose my actions and choose to show client birthdays, I'm going to see Daniel or Danielle has a birthday tomorrow. So it shows at, on the calendar. If I click on it, it's just going to take me to Daniel's record. It's not going to take me and show me an activity. Oh, that's actually Daniel. I was saying Daniel, that's actually Daniel. Again, feel free and make fun of uh, my horrible English reading and writing today. <laughs> that's definitely fine <laughs> to poke fun of me on that. We, we CRM uh, well. <laughs> we we CRM well. really well. We can't talk. We can't point directions, but we can CRM. Yeah, all the other basics. <laughs> just laugh along with us. Uh, but again, the reminder is they have a birthday. I need to do something, maybe send them a card, give them a phone call. That's what the reminder is for. 
But in other cases, we have reporting. So if I go to reports on the left-hand side, you're gonna see here's a huge list of reports and different options that I have. Um, some of those that we're gonna talk about a little bit are gonna be our note reporting, our activity reporting, and then a real special one that I love to talk about is our no contact report. Okay, so this again is digging into your history in your system to see what's going on. Maybe with your activities, you wanna run an activity report for this week's meetings. For like you, maybe you have a Monday morning meeting and everyone sits down and says, here's what I have to do this week. You know, you can run the report first thing Monday morning to see what's available. You can even run the same report to see what is past due still, because that's important. If I didn't do it last week, I need to do it today or this week. But you get to choose your reports. We have filters where you can set up and then control exactly what you're looking for. So in regards to that, again, left navigation menu when I choose reports, I then have my items here. Let's first talk about reminder reports. Very similar thing. I can come in here and I can say, I wanna see the client birthdays. It's gonna take me to this report. Uh, anytime you go to a report page, you select it, it's gonna run a default report, but in order to control it, you need to choose filter in the top right hand corner. This gives me complete control over all of my reminders and what's showing on this report. So for here, maybe I only wanna see birthdays within the next 15 days. I can even narrow it down and we're gonna talk about statuses for contacts tomorrow, but maybe I only want a certain status of my uh, contacts. I can apply that field and then shows, okay, here's in the next 15 days, I have five birthdays for my active clients. Here's the list of people I need to call, easy enough. I didn't need to make an action item for it, but if I do call them, I'm going to make a note. All right, so again, you still need that interaction history somehow. So the note is what's going in saying, I called, wish them a happy birthday. You can even make a special category for that, call it birthday wishes. You know, again, it's just easy so you can report and find that information. And now for other types of reports, oh, go ahead, Catherine. Uh, sorry, so then one more thing that's gonna lead like as far as like the birthdays, reminders, client reviews, things like that. Whenever we are gonna pull that notes report and we get that data, just keep in mind that those are notes that we have put in. So make sure it's nice and precise. Um, one thing I forgot to mention earlier and I just caught myself like, wait a minute, I didn't say it. Notes cannot be edited. So when it comes to making these notes that say, hey, we've reached out to them, hey, we did this, make sure it's nice and precise because we can't go back in and go, whoops, I forgot this 17 words that I meant to put in here. You can always add that comment, but once it's entered, it's entered. That's the one thing to always keep in mind. So sorry, I was like, wait a minute, I just remembered that. <laughs> No worries, no worries. And that, that's really important. Whereas like activities themselves, yes, you can change activities up until the point where you complete the activity, but having that ability to not edit something is controlling your data. History is set. You know, you can't change history and that's really important, especially if you know auditing your system, running your reports, making sure they're accurate, is you don't want that data once it's passed to continue moving around. So it's really important to have it set. Now in this case, if I need to run a report on find certain notes. Maybe I want to pull a report and see every single client review note I made since the beginning of the year. I can do that with the reports. So I'm going to choose reports on the left. Then from here, I'm going to go down to note reports. Once I'm on note reports, I can choose notes by contact. It's my only option there. And again, I selected a report. So the first thing I want to do to control the information is choose filter in the top right hand corner. And again, this is controlling what I'm looking at. Now for here, you have a start date and an end date. This is looking at the range of where am I looking for in my notes. In this case, the start date is how far back do I want to go. So I can say I want to look to the beginning of the year, so I'm going to put January 1st, 2020. Now the end date, again, is how far out am I looking with notes. The end date cannot be technically past today. You can set this to go, you know, I want it to look till June 4th but it is impossible to have a note in the future. So keep that in mind. If you see a note that shows in a future date, there is something wrong with the data in your system, please contact us, but that will not happen. Um, so in this case, again, I cannot look past because notes are all about history. So I'm looking to the beginning of the year to today. I can narrow it down to a note with a particular word in it. I can narrow it down to one particular contact. Again, anything I fill out underneath the date range is just narrowing down what I'm looking for in my report. 
if I don't want to narrow down too much, I can leave these blank and it's going to just search for all notes in this date range. But what I'm going to do is use the note categories tab right here and narrow it down to everything that I marked as client review notes. So I can just choose one note category or I can choose multiple. I can even select client meeting notes on top of that. I want to see these two categories in this date range is what I'm showing. I can even choose which users made those notes. And then right here, all I'm going to do is hit apply filter. And then in that date range, it's going to show me, let's see how many notes. We have 32 notes that were made since the beginning of the year that were about client reviews or client meetings. And so again, if I need to print this out or if I need to pull it up for some reason for a meeting to, to do anything to find this information, you have your note reports available. So it's easier to find that information. Absolutely love that. It's, if you use a word, um, maybe you put a certain symbol or a like a stock symbol in there and you wanna see any time you mentioned that certain stock, as long as you typed into the note, you can put it into your report filter and find those notes with that particular word or phrase, anything that you put into the notes, you can report on. Absolutely. I always love like that. to consider the filter kind of our second brain here. Cause it might be one of those days where like, I know I wrote this on someone's contact notes, but I can't remember who the life of me that is come in here and actually use that phrase. So like Garst is saying, if you have it where it's like, I know I talked to someone about Tesla stock, but you can't remember who it was within the last few weeks use that filter and just search the word Tesla or stock or whatever that is that you're looking for. Um, similar, and maybe you have something where it's like, hey, they're going through um, a job loss right now. That's a, that's a thing that's happening right now. Maybe you wanna know how many of your clients have that affected. Maybe they have some more uh, family changes. Maybe someone had a new child that was just born or something like that where you know there's gonna be financial impact just search for that particular phrase and you're going to get everything that matches that particular word or something along those lines. Exactly. Love that. So now on top of note reports, you also have, if I come back over to reports on the left-hand side, I'm going to click activities. Now notes, again, if I click only has one option of notes by contact, but if I click activity reports, you'll see there's a few more items. Notes by contact is just a general activity, sorry, activities by contact is just a general activities report. I can also narrow down to activities that I've assigned out to other people or specific activities that other people have assigned to me. So if you need to say, I need to check up on the activities that I've been, the tasks that I've been sending out to other users in the database, you can go to activities assigned by you to others and easily pull those up so you don't need to track them. I know a lot of people will leave themselves on as an attendee to task they're assigning out so they can see what's going on with that. But if you utilize the reporting with this, you don't have to leave yourself on. You can just run this report on a regular basis. Maybe like every Monday, I'm going to check up on the, re uh, the activities I sent out. And then at the end of the week on Friday, I'm going to do the same thing for that week. So I can make sure that everything is getting done when it should. You also have the option to go do a report on deleted activities. So if you do delete activities, you can run this report. You can even bring those activities back after you run that report. So we're gonna do activities by contact and the same, same functionality here. You go to filter in the top right hand corner and you can choose what activities am I looking for in a date range. Now in this case, activities can happen in the future. I have something scheduled for next week or for this week coming up. I wanna run a report for all of my activities from today to the end of the week and see what's happening. That you can do. You can also again, narrow down to a contact by certain servicing and writing advisor. How Catherine was talking about narrowing down to specific words or phrases, you can do that in the subject or even in the description box. So I wanna see any time I mention this phrase in the description box in my activities, that's important to me. Same thing, you can run this activities for any activity that's still open, any activities that's been completed or a combination of both. I wanna see all activities open or completed. You can narrow it down to even just repeating activities and then types and categories. Just like we had for notes, I want to see only the activities that are marked as appointments and phone calls. However you want, but the point of the filter is to control what information you're looking at with this report. Now, one other report that I want to show off is I absolutely love this, is if we're going to go to contact, uh, reports back over on the left over here, and then we're going to choose contact reports, and then down at the bottom, it says no contact. What I love about this one is it's specific to 
shows you contacts who have had no notes or completed activities in the past certain amount of time. So essentially, this is the list of people I forgot about. The goal of this report, and this is probably the only time this, uh, the goal for a report is, is to have nothing show up. If nobody shows up on this report, you are doing perfectly fine. But again, I wanna control what I'm looking for. So I choose filter on the top right, and I can say in the past 90 days, I wanna see any contact who's marked as active and maybe we're gonna focus specifically on AAA. And again, we're gonna talk about status and category tomorrow and how to control that information. But I'm looking in the past 90 days, all of my active AAA clients, who have I not spoke to? Because maybe for my client service model, I wanna reach out to my AAA active clients every three months. And because I'm looking in the past 90 days, that's about three months, I can apply that and it's gonna show me, let's see how many people I have. The list of people is gonna show me, here's everyone, here's the 54 people that I'm supposed to be reaching out to quarterly who I haven't done anything with. And you know, so essentially this is the people I let fall through the cracks. Again, do as we say, not as we do. We have people missing on this all the time. That's definitely fine because we're in a demo database. But again, this report, and again, that's reports on the left-hand side, contact reports, and then down at the bottom is no contact. You have a lot of power with all these different report options. And if you're not familiar with what's there, definitely dive into those reports, look around to see what's available, and then, you know, and then mess with those filters, see what your options are. That's the best way to learn, especially in the system, just dive in, jump around, see what's available. Even in our PDF um, that we have available for you guys, there's lists of different commonly uh, reports and searches and things like that. We have a lot of information already there for you. But as you can see, before we come up to our break, it's time to review a little bit of the stuff we've been talking about. So we're gonna be doing a pop quiz. So again, there's gonna be four questions now about what we've talked about. We are going to bring up a poll and that will pop up on your screen. If you have the, the downloaded version of Zoom, if you downloaded it when you started today, you'll be able to interact with us. If not, that's totally fine. We're gonna put the questions up for you, but Let's go ahead and start this. Catherine, should I start the poll on my end I'm here? I'm gonna try it this time, see if it wants to cooperate. I just launched it, so hopefully everyone's seeing it. I'm seeing the countdown going. Okay, awesome. So everyone should see, if you don't, uh, there we go, perfect. So you should see the poll. You go ahead and start answering those. If you don't see all the questions, you can scroll down. Doesn't look like people are going into them, so it might not be launched. Let me try this one. Oh, oh there oh, we go. There, we, there go. we go, we got them coming in. I was like, we're oh. just trying to be a little pushy here. So yes, <laughs> if you don't see all four questions on that pop-up, scroll down and you'll see all four questions, but dive in there, answer those questions, and then we're going to review them. For those of you who don't see that, I'm going to click on the next screen here. These are the questions that are coming up. So true or false, notes can be edited after you enter them. Second question, what customizable fields should you use to best segment your activities? Number three, fill in the blank. Notes are used for anything that blank. And then four, when creating repeating activities, it's suggested that you always have a what? So again, go ahead and fill those out. Uh, we'll give uh, just a few minutes here to make sure everyone types those in. Looks like people are doing really well. We can see those as you guys type them in. I think everyone was cautious at first. They're like, do I really yes. want to answer? Yes. Nobody, no one wants to be the first one to answer the question, but that's, that's fine. Always be first. I like, to, yeah. I like to answer things as soon as possible, even if it's wrong. And I will say, this is anonymous, guys, so we won't see who actually got it wrong. So don't feel, if you don't remember it, that's okay. We're going to review them, but just try your best. There's, we're not going to go like, hoo hoo, I see you over there in New Jersey. Yes. What's going on? <laughs> we promise. <laughs> So again, you got four right. questions. Just make you make sure you scroll. We'll give about a couple more, like a couple more seconds here. There we go. Well, how how about we go ten after? So ten more seconds. We'll give time for people to get through there. Sound good? And then we're going to show you the results, and we're just going to recover everything real fast. Review, make sure everybody is on the right track before we do take our break, and then go into the next section. All right, I see. It. Oh, no, I was just going to end it. And then I saw the number like <laughs> really fast. I'm like, oh, <laughs> all right, Kat, let's go and end it. Let's end it now. Perfect. All right. So if you didn't get a chance to answer them all, no worries. Like I said, we're going to go over them. Um, so 
let's do that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and share our results now. All right, so first question here, true or false? Notes can be edited after you enter them. Beautiful, looks like we have a pretty good number here of false. This is absolutely false. You cannot edit notes after they've been entered them. This is one of those like- We got 89% of you answered that right. Which I like beautiful. that. Beautiful, very good. Question two, what customizable fields should you use to best segment your activities? Uh, so it looks like, again, really actually, we have some top-notch listeners today. We've got 87% coming in with our types and categories. So I'm disappointed that nobody put us. I know. Like nobody that. answered as Curtis or Catherine right there. <laughs> They're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, now I know a couple of you picked that status and category, and that's actually something we're going to be really talking about tomorrow. Um, but for activities specifically, it is types and categories. All right, let me scroll down here. Question three we had is that fill in the blank. Notes are used for anything that has happened. Remember, it looks like actually really top notch here. 94% of you got this right. It is for everything that has already happened. Again, this is notes we're talking about. Notes are past tense, so it has happened. And our last question here, when creating activities, it's suggested that you always have a with 76% correct on this one, end date. That is absolutely true. As you guys might remember, Curtis was over there going out to the year, I think it was like, what, 18,100. Definitely set that end date. Again, if you need to complete a little bit early, you don't have to complete a long period of time. You just have about five years that you wanna have, so. Now again, that question, it was specific to repeating activities. A lot of those, those answers are correct, if it wasn't about a repeating activity. It's not suggested that you always have a description. It is great to have a description, but when we're specifically talking about repeating activities, we suggest you choose an end date. Like Catherine said, so it doesn't go on forever. We wanna control the information we're creating. Perfect. You did really All well right. on that one, actually. I'm very, very happy. <laughs> I like that. So this is actually taking us, we're, we're a little ahead schedule, that's definitely fine. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a 10 minute break. So it is 10, 12 a.m. We're gonna come back at, we're, we'll give you 11 minutes. We're gonna come back at 10, 23. All right, that's actually my birthday, October 23rd. We're gonna come back at 10, 23 Pacific time. We're gonna put a little timer up here and make it a little easier. Oh, we're not back, there we go. We're gonna put the timer up. So at, in 10 minutes, go ahead and you know get some coffee, get some a drink, get some water, get a snack, or you know you can sit here and you know, watch the screen countdown up to you, but we will be back in just about 10 minutes. Thanks so much for joining us today for this particular session. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 800-206-5030, option three for support, or just shoot us an email over to support at redtailtechnology.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.